This is the Go Maluku podcast. So now I have time for handicrafts and mm. doing some podcast with you. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was because I was about to say like, when you showed when you showed that. So what is it? Is it a handkerchief? Is it a scarf? What well, what is it exactly? What you're making? This is going to be for my. A husband or my future husband's uh, neck piece for the Sami uh, traditional clothing, Scold mm-hmm. Sami clothing, and for Scold Sami's this is a uh, one. Uh, this kind of uh, well, beading is one of the decoration, but we do for our clothing. Oh, so all right. I'm, do- I'm doing his uh, uh, wedding clothing here. So, so you're making it. The clothes, the clothes that he's going to wear for the wedding. Yeah, then, he wanted. Okay. Yes, yeah, he wanted to wear also Scott Sammy uh, clothing for respect, and I I think it it's very nice because our hand we don't have so many men who are wearing this, so I was very excited. But now I'm a bit cursing because I this is the first one what I'm doing and so much to do. <laughs> How does this, um, is it a lot of difference, the skull Sami clothing with the quote-unquote regular Sami uh, um, Gakti, for, for example? Well, it's not that there is, of course, there's like a regional uh, differences. For skull Sami, we use beading for the decoration instead of these um, uh, decorative bands, but we... Also, for women, have a different kind of uh, clothing. We have different kind of head. Someone was calling me now. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> of course. But yeah, we have a different kind of uh, clothing what we wear and use. So mm. it, you can see the differences. All right. And... I'm I'm super curious about about this because what is, um, how does the skull Sami differ from, yeah, what what is this skull Sami to to be to to be exact so people have an idea because a lot of people only know the Sami but they don't know skull Sami. Well, skull Sami is a minority in a Sami community that we would say that there's only in Finland we have only five four to five hundred people who speak the language but there's like thousands of scott sami so there's not much of us mm-hmm. and uh, for scott sami we had our uh, traditional livelihoods nowadays a russian side in a place called petsamo i don't recall the name for english but uh, yeah we lost our uh, traditional uh livelihood for example my grandmother need to flee from there when he was 13 she was 13 years old Mm -hmm. and uh, nowadays it's in russia and um yeah of course we have called sam is also in norway and uh, russia but they have a so much different situation and here in finland that uh, the language is uh, already extinct in norway and uh, in Russia, there's only a few speakers left. So there's borders, uh, which are like also making our culture re- revitalization very difficult. But in Finland, I have seen how the called semi language and the culture is revitalizing and reviving all the time. And it's nice to see how all of this cultural Things like handicrafts, singing methods, uh, this loud, and um, also language are revitalizing. So it's a uh, we have a different history. We have a different religion. Scots Amis are mostly Orthodox. They belong to Orthodox Church, and uh, but still they are we are Samis as well, and uh, mm. just a different group. We have a lot of, like, for example, in 
uh, for Northern Sami language, there's a lot of like uh, affection from Norwegian language, but we in Scott Sami because we are from the Eastern part of uh, Sápmi, so we have a lot of like Russian affects on our language. So, huh? Okay. Yeah, it's That's it's how I would say. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a, um, because when I, uh, yeah, told people that, um, that I was having a conversation with you, um, obviously people Google a lot. So like, as soon as I, as soon as I, um, uh, what was it? Yeah. As soon as I dropped your name, they, they, they Googled it and like, they asked, what is, what is called Sami? So it is super interesting to learn that because yes a lot of people only know that the sami as one people but there, there, there's is, is cult sami the only group within the sami or are there are there are, are there multiple that there you know is different yeah for example in finland we have like it i would say that we the whole samis are the same um group same people but then we have a different language group Right. And different, like, and of course, occurring to the fact that we were living in different areas, that we have different kind of, uh, like, I, I would say, like, for Native Americans, indigenous peoples, from there, they have their own tribes, mm -hmm. and they have their own customs, their own traditions, they, culture, cultural, this kind of, um, like handicrafts are different so for Samis as well we have a different kind of groups and also we have a the differences come from the family different families have a different kind of traditions and the clothing culture so right. there's a lot of differences but it's nice that people are googling that's how you learn and get to know new things yeah I'm, I'm I'm a, sometimes I Google myself. Um, everyone Googles themselves. Okay? <laughs> people that people seriously, people that tell others that they don't Google themselves, they're lying. I 100% believe that people that's true. are that's lying. True. Everyone just wants to know, like, all right, w when people hit Google.com and fill in their name, like, what what pops up first? And now, some people should be ashamed, 100%. Uh, but um, I think it's. Uh, yeah, it's also interesting, like to, to see, like what, like what, um, what the alg algorithm pop, um, spits out, and yeah, and then I don't know. I've been googling. I don't know when the last time. Well, you know what? I'll I'll, go I'll do it right now. I just that's right. That, let me Google myself. You are googling now. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> see see, see what out. pops up. Um. Oh yeah. For, obviously, my my social media. Oh, that's good. And, and then YouTube videos. But yeah, so, so um, yeah, it's interesting when that people, um, they're trying to already get a feel of, um, yeah, the guests that are coming up. You know, so like, so like when I say, yeah, I'm, I, I got um, um, a, a sa sa Skull Sami coming up um, and everybody, everybody was like, what is Skull Sami? So they Google it and so they Google their guest and then they they and they're like oh oh that's interesting and obviously something what, what pops up and it's i don't know would it, would it be ridiculous for us to kick off with because it was one of the first um links that popped up on google it's like you're like listed as one of among the world's 100 most influential um what was it yeah Scott Sami journalist listed among world's 100 most influential women. Congratulations for one. <laughs> like, wow. Well, thank you. That's, <laughs> That's well, still surprising me as well that it's uh, it's big, crazy journey after that recognition. So I, I don't believe it myself. And I'm just... Uh, uh, this kind of young woman who is trying to learn some handicrafts and uh, learn different languages and uh, keep up with uh, my grandmother's language and uh, 
our heritage. So it's very weird to me that I got so much recognition by that. that I cannot believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, how, how do you, because you, you, work, you work in journalism and, but, but you're su super focused, or not super focused, um, very interested in revitalizing your, your, uh, your language and, and uh, the called mm. culture identity. Um, yeah, it, it's so, so fascinating that um, the way that you, um, yeah, how should I say it? The, the, the way that you responded to it, right? Like, yeah, I'm just a, I'm just a, a young woman that is <laughs> trying to, trying to make sense of all, everything and just do, does what she does. And then, and, and it's not just, um, it is not just a, some newspaper in, in, in Finland or, or the, the local, uh, uh, I don't know, newspaper in Inari, for, for example, but it is actually the BBC. Mm. So it's 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 quite a um, I don't know it's quite a um, um, I don't know accomplishment. What what do you think? And and it's totally okay to flex. You know, it's totally okay to say like to 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 um, oh, yeah, yeah yeah definitely. <laughs> well, hold, hold on. Do you work out? Do you do you do you do you do sports? Do you fitness and everything? By the way. Yeah, I do. I, I go to gym, but now I've been just enjoying more about the more of nature and uh, jogging and going for hikes with my dog. And uh, yeah, I do. I do work out. But yeah. Yeah, because when you were like when you were like when I said like flexing, you just showed your like like your biceps. Like hold on, like this is like <laughs> this is not like that's your that's regular. Flexing. Yeah, that that was flexing. <laughs> like it, it was it wasn't just like. You can see like people that, that work out um, that um, that flex biceps, they do differently than people that just flex biceps, you know, like just to just to show that, that they have muscles. <laughs> so, so like, yeah, yeah, people that really that are um, so into exercise, so into workout that they like, um, yeah, tense their muscles and put 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 some 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 blood in there and, and they just try to. <laughs> Uh, flex it whereas other people they just like hey we like that <laughs> Wee, yippee. well they don't yeah, make those they, they don't make those sounds though uh for, um let me <laughs> let me say let me say this um but yeah so because yeah when i when i saw that hey hold on like she she's she's definitely working out but i had to obviously confirm <laughs> um well i don't know so yeah so so in terms of in terms of um shoot now 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 my whole train of thought is is moving to exercise which i don't <laughs> want to um because <laughs> uh, I, I, I you know i was confusing you like what the fuck is happening <laughs> you know it's it's also because i went to the gym this morning so i'm still in that mode you know so i actually that was the i have a, this weird morning routine um, because I, I just feel like, I, I just feel that when, if I don't have a morning routine, at least a, a part of the, of the day that is not for me, then the rest of the day will walk away from me. Um, cause there's always your, your meetings and, 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 or I have zoom meetings and, mm. and all these things. So definitely in the morning, I try to avoid social media as much as possible when I got up and try to straight go to the gym. And then, so basically the first two hours of my day, um, I don't look at social media. Uh, I just, only thing, the only reason why I look on my phone is one, to um, um, shut up my alarm. Um, two is to put on music or a podcast or audiobook or whatever. And then three to check what time I, um, cause over here, we have to do uh, make a reservation for the gym. So, um, and that's basically it. And it, at least, I have the feeling that this these two hours, two and a half hours of the day um, that are for me, then um, I I know that all right. I, at least I've taken care of myself. I set a basis for taking care of myself, and then I can go uh, into uh, yeah, doing whatever I 
uh, need to do. Anyway, so that's why I was saying that. So I'm still in this exercise mode. And then I had a meeting before before we we uh, went into the, um, we started talking. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm still, so I don't know. So, so once, you, once you started flexing, like, hey, she is exercising. Cool. That's, <laughs> I don't know. That, that's how weird my yeah. brain works. Yeah. 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 But that's very important that you have uh, this kind of mindset that you you go and do something for yourself before, for example, go to work. But then you are totally focused on uh, anything else and you keep uh, taking care of yourself. That's very important. Yeah. Do you have something that that it's um, that you it doesn't have to be an exercise routine, but every something that you do to kick start up your day? Um, because you have a job, you work in journalism, media, so that can be intense as well. Yes. Have- well, nowadays, when I mostly work from home, I've been very lazy. Uh, I can tell that I had a, also burnout last uh, autumn. Oh. So nowadays, I've been very, like, um, trying to get enough sleep. And I've been very lazy about doing anything to ring or in the morning so at the at morning in the morning when i w- woke up i just uh, open my laptop have a good breakfast that's the thing that i need i need a lot of like berries and oats and fiber and then i do my morning morning meeting with our lesapmi team and after that i take our dog really for a walk so that's the thing how I start my day, but uh, nothing very big. Now I used to go more like a morning jogs, and I love it. It's like a very refreshing, and you get a, like a very good energy for the day. But the nowadays I feel very lazy, and I've been just waking up and taking it easy, mm-hmm. and uh, going to a meeting right after the breakfast. So it's quite different, but. Um, it's all about the routine that sometimes it needs to be switched. But after last uh, autumn and I came back to work, I started to more put effort on uh, sleeping and getting a good night's sleep. And, mm. and that's how, how you can be more energetic, not pushing myself to the limit when I haven't had a good sleep. It's not a good or ideal for anyone. Would it be um, yeah, horrible to ask, like, what is the lesson that you've learned from um, from that particular period um, that in that, that burnout that, that you talked about? Um, yeah, I've been always like very, I'm not like a, career oriented but I've been always like I have a pure joy for doing my job and being a journalist and speaking the voice of Sammy's and uh, telling stories that I love my job but sometimes I I've been very it's been hard for me to get rid of my work after the day that my day didn't always up when I started my work day it just continued and I was just uh, dwelling on my thoughts with uh, work and sometimes uh, the topics that I'm telling are just uh, circling in my head even though I'm not working so that was mm. the difficult for, difficult part for me and uh, for example one year ago I didn't sleep properly at all that I was waking up during the night and I was just thinking about what's wrong and um, I was so stressed all the time and um, I definitely learned that you need to take care of yourself and your mindset before the work even though you would do very important work you need to take care of yourself and your closest family and uh, people around you that um, the health is the most important to take care of I learned that and it's it made my life so much easier and I even though I'm taking my work very seriously but still I'm like uh, 
concentrating more on my personal life and health and how I am doing rather than just work and those businesses what I have there. Mm. Yeah, because in the end, you know, you, you, you're still human um, and that you have to take care of yourself as well. And at least that's, that's what I, um, I don't think that I have ever had the um, experience of going into a burnout or not that I know of um, for sure. Mm. Um, so I'm always trying to at least um, to avoid that. Uh, and is when when I get the feeling that all right, this is really overwhelming. This is really get, getting over my head. Um, I try to, um, yeah. Either I I try to slow down, like really slow mm. down, and uh, prioritize things. Or what I also do is I write a lot. Just I I I, I keep a journal and then I write down what I what I'm doing, uh, what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, which helps me also to um, yeah organize my thoughts because um, yeah, my thoughts are all over the place. It's like um, 99 things going on in one second, uh, basically. Um, so, so I try to keep things structured, and and I think I, I think maybe feeling overwhelmed is also a feeling of losing control, as in, as in like already yes. not in control anymore. Mm. Um, that it that instead of you instead of you leading your own decisions that things are being decided for you um and and that can be very yeah very scary um no not scary but toxic maybe i think maybe maybe that's a better way to describe it um have you so to yeah so to, to, to having learned from from the, the lesson from that think can you um, do you have a thought process that um, when you feel like, all right, like people have trigger points, right? Like they, they feel like, all right, I'm, I'm being triggered or, or this is going to, do you have a thought process uh, figured out or in the process of figuring it out um, to making sure that you don't feel, do not feel overwhelmed or uh, um, yeah, not going to, to into that, into that, to that slide into the uh, into downward spiral. Hmm. Well, that's the thing that you need to know how to find that your like a personal break that when to push it. And uh, for myself, I've been I'm very uh, that kind of person who gets excited very easily, and I'm always like when I something like new task for me at work or some topic that I'm working on I get very into it into it and very deeply told or uh, I'm very I'm thinking very deep all of the things even though it would be just a like a very small topic or like this kind of art you need to press out just very uh, quickly that it's not like a this investigative uh, journalism or anything so but uh, more like uh, I feel like that I am always so excited about things which is uh, I think for myself that it's a best part of myself but uh, still it's also the worst because then I cannot find that break button anymore that I need to just slow down so sometimes my uh, speed is ju just going even like faster and faster I need to do things I need to be there I need to do I'm very interested I'm reading a lot and then it, it, it was very hard for me like one year ago to make a difference on my personal life and also my um, professional life that's what I'm doing as a journalist mm -hmm. so that was very hard for me but nowadays I I am making the big line in the middle of that and I can be myself at home even though I'm working from home nowadays mm. so it's just a one one movement when I close my laptop or close my work phone entirely and then don't uh, think about my work anymore I'm just a uh, Sarah who is doing handicrafts at <laughs> work and uh, 
helping my parents and uh, doing laundry, cooking, whatever, getting inspired, other things. So that was the thing that I needed to learn. And it took a half a year to recover from that kind of a, a work method. Mm. And I feel like that nowadays it's more like um, common to have a burnout than having this kind of, like I have noticed that many of my close friends and many people who are indigenous, they, and the Sami especially, that they feel like overwhelmed, that there's so much things going on. You need to be active. You need to be educating major majority and being everywhere, like in social media. And it can be very overwhelming. And I'm not even like surprised at why people are so burned, burned out and uh, feeling that they cannot take it anymore. And it's affecting on their daily lives. And, that's the most important thing that we should learn when we are younger and that uh, we don't let that pressure to take us. That's more like that we can make our own terms how to work in this environment and, uh, and that you don't have to give all of yourself to work and for, for social media, for example. But nowadays I've been very silent in social media i don't use it that often i'm more like uh, using it on my own terms because it can be also at least for me it was very overwhelming that uh, that when you have followers when there's so many things happening like some ppc is uh, selecting you <laughs> for a this kind of hundred women list so it can be also overwhelming that you need to be everywhere you need to give answers and um, you need to be like um, work as an activist so it's it's a uh, one side of my heart is like that of course I want to do that but still I want to take care of myself and make some lines and do things on my own terms and I, I would like to teach these kind of things also for younger people who are maybe feeling uh, overwhelmed mm. on, the, on the time we speak. Yeah. Do you think that um, being, be, being in journalism and maybe the, the article in BBC helped contribute to that, that it, it creates expectations of you? Maybe at first it was very hard for me to like find that what should I do with all of this, that, that there was a journalist coming from the windows and the doors inside of my house and wanted to hear everything and learn that who is this, that why we don't know who is Sarah Westlin. And uh, I was uh, giving a lot of interviews and educating people for uh, like a year after that. And I'm very grateful that they picked me and I was part of this process and it gave more like a, a bigger platform for Sami voices and uh, especially for Scott Sami situation that we were in a, a top, in a highlights and in topics in different news channels and um, in a paper. So, I was very happy to tell the story of our people and the uh, story of my life, but still it made a lot of pressure that I was kind of ser searching for my own role in this whole circus, that what should I do, what should it be? And maybe that was one of the uh, reasons which launched this kind of a burnout in myself, that I mm. should do more, I should be more, I should... Do do this and be more active even though I wasn't uh, capable to do that right but uh, still I'm very happy that how it lifts like uh, Sami issues uh, and um, language revitalization for everyone's minds and they were reading about it and and many people were interested but even though I was very like happy to hear how many people were also like uh, motivated to like okay 
they might have lost the language as I spoke, Sammy, but they started to learn and want to take courses and they are more aware of their own heritage and um, they are willing to learn the language because it's been, well, that there was someone giving the role model for, for that everything is possible also in Scott Sami languages. Right. Yeah, in, in a way that um, you, they, they have a, they have a um, how do we say it? A lighthouse. You know, like like um, that that they have someone to, yeah, that that stands out of the crowd in a, in a way, um, and be in media, and also um, making a, a BBC list. Um, that it is something that it can. It, it's I think it's it is it is uh, an inspiring um, experience. I think that people, people when people see. Uh, someone like yourself and that also identify us as called Sami um, that yeah that, I think that is something that uh, we all uh, and, and I realize what, what now, now I'm talking that I'm just repeating what you just said um, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah is, I get the sense uh, from you that um, you are a, a person that uh, once you thrive on enthusiasm, you know, like, like it is like once you, when you, when you, when you like, really like, like something or no, I don't, I don't like, it's not the right word. You're, in, you're, you're invested as in you, 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 you see something that, that, that's, that's interesting to you and you, you're invested and you, um, you're so enthusiastic about it that you, it's hard for you to, um, yeah, to, to, say stop you know at, at some point you, you do have to stop you yes um, mm. and i mean it, it's it's qu quite brave i would say and also uh, quite strong to um yeah at some point say, all right this this is um i have to set a boundary and for you that can translate into like like once i close the laptop that that's it that that, that was sarah the um the activist, the journalist, and 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 then it is Sarah, the, um, the the person that likes to be at home, be with family, do handicrafts, and everything else. And that it's. Um, do, do you think that now that you work from home, that it, it is easier, or maybe a little bit more challenging to 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 find that difference between the two? Well. I think it's both that it's easier that way that you have, have your own mindset at home and you can I can concentrate better at home but also I miss a lot my colleague who you are like a circling around the ideas of how to do this and you need to be more independent at home and you need to like make your own choices and uh, work as a journalist alone but uh, I love the like community at my work who is like always giving you help and uh, also challenging your ideas your topic and that how we should tell these stories and uh, how to tell other one so that's that's what is like uh, challenging but also it's like um I can have more like um, ideas at home. You get more like a rest here, maybe. Mm. You can work your or do your job on your own pace that you don't have to be all the time like uh, having a coffee break there and there, but uh, more like uh, sometimes when you don't feel like that you cannot uh, like a uh, proceed with this topic then you just have a break and do something at your home have a like a, you don't have that fuss around so I think it's like a, it's a bit lonely but still there is positive and negative sides as well mm. and uh, I think my work community is one of the best in Finland that we have so much fun at work we are dealing a very 
like um, hard topics and uh, very, how would I say, like uh, provocative, like uh, news and the politics all the time that there are so many times, like we need to find our own role to tell the stories. So still we have a very like a tight community and we are French each other and uh, we are always playing for the team. So that's why I always miss the normal life that we could work at, at work. And this week I'm gonna work from, from our uh, workplace as a news anchor and doing the Scott Sammy news. <laughs> And uh, then I can have a, my team there and see my colleagues. So that's one of the like a very inspiring times of these times when you need to be more at home. But uh, uh, we, we, we can be very happy here in a Lapland area in Finland that we don't have any more that strict uh, restrictions with mm -hmm. COVID that we are starting to live more freely and we can see each other we can organize meetings versus people and we can see each other but still we need to be careful with the disease that it doesn't happen but still it's very nice to see my colleagues at work All right it's it's quite a unique uh when, when you think about uh the, the that that is um <laughs> There's, there's, there's not many indigenous, first of all, there's not many in, in, um, um, news media organizations or news stations that are run by ind indigenous peoples out there. Um, and they're emerging a little bit. And, pe and people try to do it themselves as well. Like here, people that, that go just go live on Facebook and try to, um, to report mm. on what's going on, which is also super inspiring. Because, um, yeah, like you... You're no longer at the mercy of of, of BBC or all, all the other uh, major um, yeah news outlets. Um, but what I really like ab about yeah um, what what's happening in Ilesabmi that um, I don't know I, I when I when I think about it I see there's a lot of sense of pride um, in in um, by the people that that work there and have talking to you as well. And this is not to to really, um, yeah, uh, um, to put it very bluntly, like uh, uh, pump smoke up your own ass, as in like, well, oh, yeah, this is <laughs> and that. That's not what I'm. That's, that's not what I'm doing. Uh, but it is. Um, I'm. 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 Yeah, I'm interested to how is um, what makes working at Ilas Ami so um, so nice or so good for you? Like, uh, what is uh, what is the fulfilling part of it? How do you how do you get fulfillment from that? Well, of course, like I said, the working community, and I have noticed I this is my eighth year in Ulesakmi and working there, so I've noticed that uh, you can do so multiple and complex things as well in Ulesakmi and in Sami language. The, media that you you are not just a, uh, in a role of reporter you're doing so many different like uh, uh, things that you don't just sit around uh, in front of your laptop but you can have so many uh, possibilities to try different things we are doing more like um, online videos we can we have the hardest news and uh, politics and what, whatsoever, but also we are like uh, taking steps to the future and doing more like, um, how would I say, more innovative ways to do the journalism mm. as well. So that it's not just making uh, telegrams and telling the news in the radio and TV and uh, having this live broadcast, but more like that we have our own ways to preserve our languages and they are also shown in different platforms that it's that all of the Sami languages in, in Finland are endangered, endangered 
and also as called Sami and Inari Sami, which uh, are talked like uh, or maybe 400 people are talking these languages and we have a chance to preserve the language and so for the world for the thousands of viewers that it's still alive and we are making news in this language that it's not it's not extinct yet but uh, mm. still we have a very big role for doing that but also giving the news giving the information for example yesterday we had a election day in municipality election was was in Finland and uh, we were the first who were telling about the Sami area municipalities that uh, how it went and who are chosen and it's very important that we can have in our own language as well the information that uh, it has a very big meaning for the viewers and all the audience mm -hmm. and that's that what inspires me and also of course what is part of the reporter's job when you go outside you were you are seeing people and you can you get their trust to tell the story whatever it is and mm. uh, i've noticed it when i've been giving the interviews for different and uh, multiple journalists that how big part the trust has when you are a journalist and you and talk with people because uh, I sometimes felt like that I'm just a like a, that I wa wasn't even a person for many journalists that I have a feelings and I have my own uh, schedules in my life so nowadays I've learned to uh, appreciate every single person who invites me to their home or even giving some time even an hour from their life that i'm very grateful for, for that that it's not sometimes we are thinking as a journalist that it's just a big it's not a big deal but of course it can be mm. for different people that you need to be always like very appreciating that someone is giving some personal space for you maybe it's a finish thing that it's the personal space is a <laughs> or like this kind of Scandinavian <laughs> that we are afraid of people but <laughs> still it, it I'm mean, every time I'm nowadays like to thank you for inviting me that I can come and I was welcomed here when do you um when do you know when people trust you um well of course you can hear when it's like uh, when you are working with certain topic, I'm taking some enough yarn here. No, please, time. please, please continue. Yeah. It's, it's fun to look at. Seriously. Yeah, <laughs> that uh, when you are talking with people about certain topic, and then you are like uh, carefully asking it, it. Of course, it differs from the topic, but for example, some uh, politics or something very personal. It's always like you that you can hear from the people's voice that are they ready for an interview right now. And uh, of course, I've taken that kind of a motion that I, for like a private persons who are not like, a, who are not uh, like a politicians or someone like a public uh, speakers, people <laughs> that, that they, they don't have to be pressured for the interviews that, that you can hear it from the person that, that do they have a trust or do they have a like that kind of situation in life that they can uh, join for an interview mm. but also like uh, of course i don't want to like uh, start the conversations when i am thinking about some topic that i'm always at first asking and telling and uh, what I am up to and telling, being very open about things that the, what you want to do with them and what kind of uh, programs this interview is coming and that's the most important. Is, is there some kind of a, um, like a universal 
mistrust against journalists that that you first had to jump over as as, as a threshold? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. That it might be like a yeah, mm. I could say. Good. Yeah. What what is what is it that that I'm 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 wondering like what people misunderstand about the the um yeah the, the not the work but it's more about about what journalism as a as a um yeah w- what people misunderstand about it obviously there are people out there um that there, 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 and you see you see it on tv that there's things that are leaked or people are misinterpreted um is 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 that it that 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 what they see on TV uh, on 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 or, or radio or internet that that becomes um, their 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 view of, of what journalism is? Is, is that, could that be it? It could be, and uh, of course, there's a lot of like uh, before anything goes to the TV or radio, there's a big blur behind it that it's not just uh, like at least when I remember that uh, when I was younger I was just consuming TV news and watching and uh, figuring out that maybe someday I could be there uh, that, that looks fun and interesting mm. that uh, you can see and meet so many different people and uh, tell uh, like be um, how would I say? I just I have only words in in Sami on my mind. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that uh, it's very important that uh, that people would see that there's uh, the final product is not always the same. But it started with that there's a lot of things and uh, work behind it, but also like. Uh, that's what is very important nowadays that you need mm. to be like a m- media critical that it, you cannot believe everything that is there that there's always another point of view and you cannot always tell the whole story and the picture in the tv news for example there are so many like um, controversial topics nowadays as well which is uh, uh, to, what people are talking about and uh, what the TV news are reporting almost every day that there is always another point of view that it's not the whole truth what is telling it, they are telling in the in the news even though they try their hard, hardest that uh, you can get the most of mm-hmm. the information what you get. Do you, do you, um, is there, because Ilisami, Ilisami is, is, a, is a indigenous, is a, is a Sami news station, um, is there like a, a, a different expectation um, compared to like regular news stations that, that you um, be more in depth or that you, that you spend more time on, I don't know, colonialism or politics or, or something along those lines um is is that expect, expectation there and if so is so like how do you yeah how, how do you how do you manage that of course there's a lot of expectations and when you think about it then uh, Sami people are a small uh, indigenous group that there is not not so many of us so of course the circles are tiny here and uh, there's almost always the same faces in the news as well, the politicians who we are interviewing or the telling and analyzing about the everyday topics. But uh, still, there is a lot of like expectations that we should be everywhere. And of course, um, Rulia Sapmi is a small Sami media, but there's only 20 people, all of us, there is also technicians and the producers and there's not so many of us so uh, I've heard I've felt many times that I should be more uh, like almost working 24-7 that I would I would do 
do the best job what I can. As we mm. we need to also prioritize and see that what kind of uh, powers we have right now to report of some issues. But of course, the community that oh, media should be here. This is very important, and uh, and of course, the many happenings that are have, are coming up. Many people then think that yeah, maybe me, Sami media doesn't see this as very important thing when they didn't come. But it's not always about that. But, uh, it's very important to see that how small resources we still have. That we cannot be everywhere, but there is ex- different kind of expectations, and also there's been a, uh, some expectations from major majority media that we should we shouldn't be telling about the politics of Sami and indigenous peoples because we ourselves are indigenous. That they see that we are not uh, good enough to tell that we should be more white to do that. Mm. So. There's a different kind of expectations, but that's the most important for myself that we know that we're doing very good work and we can always learn from our mistakes, that we don't we are not afraid of doing mistakes or anything, that we do our best every time and prioritize the things that is possible. Right. Yeah, I think that that is the fair assessment of of and gives people also an idea of the how you try to be accommodating uh, to to um, yeah to re- report on whatever is is um, currently uh, playing in in the in the in the Sami communities or in, in in but also trying to yeah make it make it. Um, yeah, I, I can see. I can see the the um, the challenge um, that 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 you're that you're faced with. Um, that is, what is? I don't know. This is something that has been on my mind actually. Is is there um, for? I've I've seen you you do the handicrafts and you a super. Uh, fo- um, yeah, one of the champions, I would say, in terms of revitalizing Skull Sami. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, well, I don't have I don't have a one hundredth list of most influential women, but um, I, I think what I what we, we we talked, listened to you, and um, yeah, I, I think um, it, I think it's um, a a a um, yeah, how should I say it? It's it's. It's due, you know. It is. You, you, I can see what you're doing. Um, I can. He, I hear you. What, what your ideas are, uh, what you're trying to achieve, um, which is very commendable. Um, because there, there's. You have a, a, and please correct me if I'm wrong. One hundred percent. Yeah, I, I can see you have a mission, right? You're on on a personal mission trying to revitalize um, the 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 Skolt Sami. Uh, culture, language of culture, language, and um, yeah, really trying to make use of talent and skills. I might say um, <laughs> to to do that. Um, and, and you have the the opportunity um, to to do to use media uh, to do that. So I I think it's. Yeah, the more that I think about it, it it is um, for I would say like the an obvious reason why you made the one one hundred list and and not that it is a measuring stick. Not that that, that uh, I'm not saying that, but it is a um, yeah. I can I can see you that that um, you one one of the the people that that uh, is really um, trying to to put it um yeah revitalize it um i don't know it's something something that, something that i think about is like well maybe i don't know it's an idea i don't know i, I don't know who who the boss is at Ila, Ila me but like hey let, let's do a skull sami handicrafts show or whatever is, is has that been <laughs> has that been discussed at any point um i don't know that, that could that could be interesting to watch because the sami are really into, into handicrafts um 
most Sami that I talk to, talk to, like they can talk about politics, um, reindeer, reindeer husbandry, and handicrafts. Yeah, like two two out of the three. Like like every time everyone every everyone I talk to, they can they can talk about at least two two out of the <laughs> three of these things. It's either politics um or reindeer um hurting reindeers or handicrafts yeah i don't know where it comes from but i think it's the handicrafting is so close to the our nature mm. we get well most of the like um our ingredients and materials we get from the nature uh, and uh, we use it as a gift and to be our trying to do like as pretty as we can and using the knowledge what we had for centuries now for making something pretty well for example this is just a piece of fabric and some beadwork but i'm or beads what i'm trying to uh, do this is not from the nature from here but for example for all samis we used to do is similar things also with the fish bones and I have another um, handicraft on the way from fish beading as well but uh, still that I think it's also communicating and for handicrafts this is almost like a meditation for me and I'm, mm. I've learned so much from my family history about this called Shami heritage and uh, about our traditions mm. with uh, alo alongside the handicrafts and uh, i think it's been also like a journey with uh, like in with language that you need i learned it when i was a, a adult at 20 years so oh yeah around 20 10 years ago i started to learn some language but also the handicrafts and it's been like a similar kind of a, like a journey for myself that you learn and you have this kind of a roller coaster with the language learning that you feel like that you are not enough but uh, you are still all the time like proceeding further and learning more and uh, using the language more but also with the handicrafts that it's been i've noticed it in uh, also at my work when I've been doing all of these reports about the handicrafts that how people are celebrating their culture and learning some new things because for Scott Samis it felt like that in many different ways we needed to revitalize the handicrafting and all of these kind of uh, methods how we do our head pieces our head presses and all of the addresses what we are using that we needed to light up a new fire for that tradition as well that so many young people didn't wear the called sammy dresses and for example i'm so happy to do this for my fiance so he will be one of them who is carrying uh, the called sammy right. and clothing mm. and for example so you're um you're beating on an, you, you you're sewing in a way um a particular pattern is that um, that what does it reflect or symbolize, um, or is it something that which I, I assume not that you just like hey got up this morning I like the I like this uh, I like this pattern so I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm 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 gonna go with that um, can can you yeah can, can you explain also like if there's what that what that particular pattern entails and yeah if there's because I know, yeah. Sorry, I'll stop there. Because um, I uh, otherwise I'll, yeah. I'll butcher butcher everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's hard to say that what it, um, what kind of story it tells, but it always tells some kind of story. It tells you where you're from. And for example, this beading, it's been very interesting to learn that uh, we used to have like a, every Scold Sami family had their own patterns that what kind of symbols we use for uh, different kind of hats and uh, belts and stuff like that but uh, 
we don't have that tradition anymore. It disappeared that no one knows anymore. But it's very interesting that we have the, all of these kind of things. And um, also that the, when you look at, for example, some other spots, I mean, you can see right away if she's a single, especially for women, you can see from spots, I mean, women head pieces that are they single or married or are they widowed or what's going on with their marriage so marriage status so uh, you can see many things from the from with the one pinch of a look from the press dresses of what, what they are and where they come from and who they are really uh, and, and is that only um so in in a way obviously um and i'm asking for people that are unfamiliar with indigenous attire because because is it safe to say that um indigenous clothing is like communication it, yes it is and it also tells about the uh, for different kind of a uh, clothing like for other samis the cacti you can see that who made it uh, right right from the style that the, well i i don't obviously have that don't have that kind of eye for the cactus but the, of course that we tell so many stories that you cannot just take and okay i'm gonna make a similar one you are all if you would uh, do these kind of things then you would do uh, read on the same or rip same way the identity of someone else's and the story of someone else's that it, you cannot really copy the the Sami handicraft. Mm. I would say that that if you are trying to and that's also what's been in Finland. I hope and I feel like it's now being a history that they are making this kind of fake tactics and um, appro appropriating our culture that way that they are using uh, Sami handicrafts and and the dresses that cacti as a as a just a costume mm. so that's why that's why it's very offensive way to see some people to use it as a as a toy or a, just a costume or something but it's making me prettier but you are also like a ripping of the identity and part of your family history on the same time right that, there is so many like unspoken words in our traditions and uh, handicrafts and as a scott sammy i i wrote an article it's also uh published in english I can send it to you later. Please. But, uh, it tells the it tells the story about how it's like a very emotional for many many people who are learning the language again, but on the same time they are trying to revitalize this and learn the the handicrafting culture mm -hmm. that was almost uh, like a lost in the within the older within the elders and the crannies who were making these the whole their life, but they didn't tell the stories and teach the younger generation enough. So we almost lose, we almost lost this tradition as well. So it's very important to see that the, that the culture is evolving and um, it's growing all the time when we are learning it back for ourselves right yeah it, it is what i see it is hard to relearn or revitalize language and culture especially when it's on the brink of extinction um mm -hmm. when there, there's a lot of misappropriation cultural misappropriation of, of, of handicrafts or uh um, clothing attires and regalia etc etc um yeah it is uh, funny you, you talked about that culture well, especially the misappropriation um mm. is that um 
do you, do you see that happening more or less? Uh, what is how how is that developing um, these these days? I have seen that there's been a lot of like a, year after year we had this conversation after some kind of a, um, humiliating like a situation where some artist wanted to use a cacti as a provocative way or something that there's always been people are very aware of this that this is mis like they are appropriating the culture and maybe also here in Finland people are starting to realize that, that this is not our culture this is this is wrong what uh, what people are have, have been doing for example in tourism tourist in uh, traveling industry that they are appropriating the Sami culture, but still the Sami rights and all of the, these are not like, a, people don't know about these things. Mm. And uh, nowadays when, for example, with Sami media, we have had our voice in a bigger platform and telling and educating as well about these issues that uh, I think the younger generation is more wiser and more aware of these things, that it's not only the Sami who are keeping the loud noise about these th issues and things, but also some aware uh, younger generation from Finnish community are, are ready to like uh, talk about these things and say mm. that it's not okay. Right. That Does, I've I've seen in eight years that there's a lot of like progress going on. That mm. we are we don't have to talk about these issues anymore that often. Okay. Good. Because when was that? A, a while ago, um, someone sent me a um, a clip of. Do you know this? There, there's a clip of The Simpsons. Hmm. So uh, the, the, the cartoon like it's been going on for years, uh, The Simpsons, and there was a clip of that where there was um, there was some countries of the world, some countries U USA, and and then at the final one country was Finland, and um, so they portrayed uh, as, as some someone wearing a a gakti, like a sami gakti, and. And, but they, they, they uh -huh, I haven't even seen that. Yeah, it, I w I was surprised for one, but like they portrayed it as so, as someone that was primitive, that was that was, um, yeah, like incoherent, not able to to contribute to to. Obviously, it, it, no, I shouldn't say obviously. It is it is it's a, it is a comedy. It's a cartoon. However, because a lot of people are watching it. And there, and there, there's people that actually, you know, how many people um, see The Simpsons as some kind of a, uh, a, a cartoon with that can predict the future? They they predicted Trump. Right? They predicted a, a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. They're, they're, that's so people are, yeah, they, they are reference it, referencing it as. Um, yeah, something that can predict the future. In a way, it is. Um, there are people out there that, that are obviously they're like, "Hey, it's a cartoon. Don't think too much of it." But there are people also out there that that are, um, yeah, let's see it as uh, um, as the truth, as in something that is uh, that that is reflected in reality, uh, which is strange. However, there are people out there, and so showing. The, the Sami culture, for one, um, as, as something primitive, that, 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 is, that is wrong, but also that um, that is representative of Finland. Because uh, you mm. Sami are people in themselves and you're not, you're not, it's not, fin um, you're not Finnish as, a, as in that is the, the, the uh, majority culture, but it, you're not Finnish and Finland is not, is not, uh, is not Sami. So, I think those are these subtle things as well that can, that can be hurtful for um, for people trying to yeah like trying to um, 
become familiar with it with the with with the culture or with the language and um yeah there are people out there that, that think that 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 finland is primitive or the sami are, are, are primitive uh which is um mm. I, I, I'll, I'll try to find it um if i can um if i can find it i'll i'll send you the link to the video it's, it's this short clip and it's it really is like what is this and then and, and then you see the so-called finnish representative it was like it was like a un setting kind of thing and then bringing this finnish representative in there um which was really really crazy yeah it's very tacky yeah i don't know and it's, it's like a and i you have seen in many many years in finnish like a traveling industry and how you want to sell finland with sami culture and doing it very bad way as well but also i've noticed that it's getting it's not anymore getting so much um, like it's not anymore normal to do that that people are more aware of that and mm. of course it's it's like a very nowadays i'm more like i'm not sad about it but i'm very disappointed when people or some company or a tv program as um, famous as simpsons are doing these kind of things to uh, minority peoples that uh, i'm more like disappointed than angry mm. i'm just saying like mm, lame it's yeah. not good for you that you did this that it's not the right way yeah yeah i, I think anger is for disappointment is, is the best way to describe it uh, anger is um yeah i i, I, I want to see it as anger as well there's there's this um there's this office at the, at the united nations and and you have to go um if you go to the un there this um, and when i have to pick up my annual badge so it's a it's a badge that can um yeah i can i can i can, I can walk in and out of the un uh, no questions and and it's it's for the length of one year as most people nowadays they have to go to the when they go to the un they only get the badge for um the period of of that meeting it is one day or one week or two mm. weeks but i have to pick up uh from time to time every year i have to pick up my annual badge and so when you go in there's this whole wall of photos and it is what the un is trying to show as an at it is it is um the diversity um so you have um an elder elderly lady um uh, from the maasai in in kenya and you have so they're all indigenous peoples all indigenous peoples that are on, on the on the wall and which in a way it is like like you said like it, it is not you don't get angry but you are in somewhat disappointed well you do you do expect it though but like it, you're somewhat disappointed because um it it parades with the people that are marginalized or not taken seriously um as as many 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 people would put it in 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 it in its work so it 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 puts it creates these amazing posters like oh yes we 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 um we mm. fight for humanity and against hunger and everything else and and it's and it's UN in general it's not just the UN in New York but many UN agencies um they use photos of if they wanted you like starvation or famine or or uh, um lack of food most of the times they show um uh photos of kids um, uh, maasai kids in 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 kenya or mm. uh um yeah in or in the indigenous kids in of the of the san community in in south africa um so it is always trying to and maybe that's also like how media works right like people have these the, the, these ideas of how of like when they think about poor, um uh poor people they think about africa um but i know there's a lot of poor people in in or not poor um but 
indigenous peoples living in United States that are living in, in conditions that are, that, that are um, inadequate. Their housing, it is made of, I don't know, uh, cardboard and, 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 and toilet paper and, and duct tape, um, to put it, put it very bluntly. You know, it is, their housing mm. conditions are, are super bad. Um, which is that's in North America um, in, or in US, for example, in Canada, there's this um, um, uh, water advisory, meaning that you, uh, if you want to drink water, you have to boil it first. You know? So if for a developed country, um, indigenous peoples that are living in these reserves, um, they can't even drink like the water that comes out of the faucet, they have to boil it or they have to buy it. Um, I know, I know some, um, yeah, people, and I've, I've I've seen it as well. Like they have to go to these, to these uh, big shopping malls to to get these these big, yeah, these big containers of water, and they have to mm. be be very very um, uh, strict with it. Um, you know, so they they, um, uh, yeah, when it comes to that, they get the obviously they feed, feed the children, elders and everything else. So um, I'm, I, can, I can imagine that um, they can't um, take a hot shower for 45 minutes every day. Um, I guess, mm. So there, there's, what, what I'm, yeah. Yeah, that their pictures were hanged there as yeah. a de- decoration, but not really taking care of their lives, how they are living it. But it's yeah. like a very controversial. I understand what you are like trying to say here that it's been, it's very common for indigenous people and marginal, marginalized groups that you are just a decoration for someone's ball, mm-hmm. that you really don't know the concept. They don't even use your name to put next to the wall that why are you there or you are just uh, like uh, hanged on the wall as a ignored person who doesn't even have a name that's always been like a very big annoying thing for me for example not telling out loud what, what or the concern names or anything but there's also like a one hotel here in Lapland, which is using a Sami old pictures in, and they hang, they have a very modern uh, rooms like uh, for travelers or like, it's like a very, I would say five star hotel. And uh, then there is some random Sami people hanging on the wall and there's no any like an, names or any detail told there's just that they are using it as a decoration and many people have said that why you don't even cannot put their names there there's my grandfather and there's my great great grandfather and mother there so we would have the names for you but still hanging there people don't realize that how it's like very weird you just use some random people Faces to use using it as a decor decoration. It's not like a, it's weird for me. Yeah, it is. It is not something that so. so for example, this, this hotel um, putting up a, a, fo- a photo of because it, it's heritage. You know, it is, it is a photo of of, mm-hmm. of previous generations, and it, it is not a um uh what's this called yeti images like images that you can just buy off the internet that uh these, these are these general images that you can it's not a stock image that that's as well what i wanted to say mm. like you just buy off the internet for i don't know five uh 15 15 to, to 25 dollars and you don't have to mention any um um yeah, a source or or had to attribute it to anyone. Um, that that's not a, not what it is. It is like you said. You know, it it includes grandparents. It, it includes like for, for the same thing. Like there, people don't have a photo of of that particular um, elder or of because um, 
I know that there, we have a, uh, um, um, a um, or our movement has, has a, a, a president that was executed in, 19, in the 1960s. And there's not many photos of, 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 of him. Um, and um, yeah, and, and there, there, there are some photos of him that, um, but they're, 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 they're not, uh, they're not shown. They're only, they're only photos that are very familiar are the photos that are shown uh, right before it was executed. Or, um, and those are um, those photos are have been actually distributed um, by the people that executed them, um, which was um, so in a way that it was it was not like um, to many it feels like a um, um, like nagging you know like like all right we we executed them this is a photo yeah and this is the only photo you get and um, you you can. Um, so in, in a way, it is, is it is like a very negative, toxic way of, of doing things, which was obviously sounds, which was the intent, obviously. But yeah, I think in terms of, of circling back to, to um, what, you, what you said about this um, appropriation and at least recognize uh, like the people that that you're portraying right it, it is it, it, like recognition it is it can go a, a very long way when it comes to indigenous peoples at least recognize it at the at the, at the forefront um let's let's start with that um because that's a, the, the the least you can do um for for a lot of it, indigenous peoples and which also includes you know like recognizing that these the, these elders grandfathers or great grandfathers are on the on that photo um yeah I, yeah I don't know it, it, so are they yeah is is are they going to does it look like they're going to uh, change or add the, the, the names to, to the to the to the to the to the image that they have in their hotel or is it likely it, to stay uh, well yeah it's more likely to stay because mm. many people have uh, said I heard that they've been talking to the a hotel reception and telling to manager as well that we used to do something about this. They are nice. Yeah, we understand that it's nice to use the beautiful and uh, bold pictures in your decoration. But what about the names? Could be right. possible. Mm -hmm. That uh, nothing hasn't changed for now. What? um. So listening to you to the, um, um, the whole time, right? And there's actually there's one question that pops up into my head, and I, um, yeah, how should I should have put it? It it can sound quite in, not not um, interesting or intimidating. That does it, it depends on how you look at it, but I think it is in, very much in line with um, yeah what you're trying to do. Like you're trying to revitalize the the skull Sami language and um, um, you're using the platforms that are, that are to your, um, that you have available to you um, to, to do that. And what, which is quite kind of intriguing that the question that, that I've in my head is like, or what, what is the, what is your, let's say, and for lack of a better word, like uh, what is your plan for world domination? And let's like, <laughs> which, which is, well, uh, seriously, that's been, been in my head. And I mean, in a good way. And like, how do you, how, what, what is your view? What do you like to see? What do you like to do um, to amplify it more? Or what would you like to see happen to, in terms of revitalizing the, the Skull Sami language? Uh, of course, everything starts from the, like a normal life, daily life for the Sami community, how the school works, how the education goes, how people can continue their work and use or get their children, for example, to the Sami language 
uh, daycare or like this kind of language nests, how people can continue their, their daily lives without all the time concerning that how these things for my kid or, or my life is going to work out as a Sami. Can I have the rights what I, I, I should have? Can I go to school and learn the Sami languages? But I think that's the first thing where I can stop and see that yeah, there's been a difference happening. That uh, when, from the birth till the day when you are dying, you can live happily as a Sami, and you can have, a, for example, services and all of these kind of things in your own language. We are far from that, that we don't get so easily uh, like equal rights for the own language, the uh, daycare system, for example, what comes to my mind and uh, how people are treated when they are elders and they go to a hospital and they don't understand, for example, Finnish anymore, mm. and how they are treated there as the Sami language or Sami people. And um, and of course, it's a very big thing for me to see at least that the majority in Finland would recognize the Sami as a, as an indigenous people who have their own culture and we are not like, uh, we are still powered by the majority group, but we are, have our own customs and uh, our own land. We are living for the land and from the land. We are trying to preserve these languages and and uh, recognize the history, what happened to Samis and different kind of happenings and situation. So that would be the like a day when I can see that some people can can live their entire life without concerning all of these kind of things but we have to concern now right and is this but by the way um was media always um because you're in media right now was that something that you really always wanted to do or is it something that 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 came by accident, so to say, uh, on, on your path? <laughs> well, for me, it was uh, very tricky to find my own path or like um, occupation, what I would love to do when I get older. Mm. Of course, I was uh, dreaming of having my own cafe, uh, cafeteria or a bistro or something. I dreamed about being a hairdresser and being a... Uh, uh, a wet veterinary or, or something, but still it was very hard for me when I was on that age, uh, around 15, that what should I do that as soon I have to decide. And in high school, I remember I got a lot of like um, good feedback from my uh, Finnish teacher, Finnish language teacher, that uh, you, you are very good with people and uh, you are writing very well and maybe a journalism would be a thing for you. And I figured out that, yeah, actually I realized that journalism is something else than just being a boring newspaper <laughs> guy <laughs> or having this kind of image of a Superman in my mind that I don't wanna do that kind of work that I'm just writing for a print media. But then I realized that journalism is so multiple and um, there's so many ways to do that and many kind of platforms and then I was just a little bit by little I was figuring out that I would love to do some radio and TV it's very interesting to me I love to like see people and talk with them and hear stories and tell the stories what I just heard so I think that was the big kick for me that there was some teacher who was believing in me that I could do something like that because on that 
time when I was in high school, I, there was a lot of speech about the uh, working in a media is a, like a suicide that you don't get any job, you don't have any job, and it's like a, there's too much people in that field. But I never stopped believing that I could work here. And um, from the day I graduated, I've been all the time working, having one burnout <laughs> and uh, then still working. And uh, I'm very happy I did so. And we are still like um, Prosami Media, it's uh, all the time we are like uh, competing with a good, uh, good uh, employees that they could, or uh, students and who are interested of journalism that we could get them. Because there's always work in Sami, uh, Sami media, in diff- and also there's a lot of work in different Sami fields. So I'm very happy that I came back here and find out my own path in the Sami media and as a scope Sami journalist. Right. But it wasn't always uh, very easy to find out that what to do in my life. Hmm. What is it- I'm, what is the, so um, let's say so there's Sami youth out there, um, it's called Sami youth and look at you, super inspired, want to do something similar or at least have the same mindset. Let's not say like something similar, but have the same mindset um, that you do. What would, um, Yeah, what is the what is the the mistake that you want them to avoid that you've learned maybe or the biggest lesson that you've learned? Oh, that's a big question. I made a lot of mistakes. I would say like don't be afraid of doing mistakes and uh, and that it's very normal along the way when you are trying to find your own way when you are in university, when you're learning the language, don't be afraid of mistakes, but more uh, learn from them. And uh, don't make like that. That always you need to like believe in yourself that what you're doing, that sometimes the things what you are doing are bigger than the world, that uh, it's very important to try to find a stable mindset with yourself and not doubt yourself too much. Of course, you need to have a, like a, this kind of healthy relationship with your own mind and with your image of yourself. But still, that uh, I was, I have been always very sensitive person and insecure. So it was very hard sometimes for me that I was. Uh, bullying myself of my own mistakes and uh, if I didn't do something correct or if I wasn't pleasing someone enough so that's what everyone should learn in my opinion to be more true to their self and willing to learn all the time that the world is never ready or like complete that you wouldn't uh, you won't be ever perfect to do anything what you're doing. You can always learn more and do something to evolve. Mm. You can always do something to evolve. Yeah. That's what I, I've been always thinking of, that I can be very rude. I think I am the biggest like um, villain on, in my la- own life for myself that I am always bullying myself and I'm always seeing the past that I'm worrying a lot but and now I've been learning away from that that I shouldn't worry I should I just should do more mm. and not just think about too much overthinking or anything that I should more trust myself and in the in the age of 29 I finally started to learn that I can always learn and and uh, still be okay with that. Have you ever thought about, because um, you, you, you would think about a lot of things, right? So for example, starting your own cafe, 
Has that, has that crossed your mind? <laughs> has, has that crossed, crossed your mind anything, anytime lately? Like, oh, maybe I should be doing this. Yeah, actually, we were with my fiance. We were in during in the weekend. We were in the cabin, and he's a very good breakfast breakfast chef. He, he can make a very good sandwiches. And then we were like planning, like, yeah, maybe someday if we are very rich, we can make our own bistro somewhere in here and we can do our sandwich bar and uh, giving good food for people and something different what we don't have here in in northern Finland and in Satni that uh, sometimes I'm I would love to uh, see and have something similar in here than in bigger cities that we could have some cafeterias or uh, or bistros more restaurants and Somehow it's always like a, one of my dreams is with the food, of course. It would be very much fun. And yeah, combination of that maybe, um, starting your own cafe or restaurant kind of thing or humble something with, um, yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe uh, um, food or dishes in the Skolt Sami language. Uh, so, yeah, that, mm-hmm. that, that combination. Um, oh. Holy shit. Yeah. That's a nice dog. <laughs> very quiet. Yeah, it's really. Yeah, it would be very nice to have something like that, like a cultural bistro or something. But the, the main thing is to give for people some healthy, uh, delicious food. That would be the dream. Is, is there, <laughs> is there um, unhealthy, a lot of unhealthy um, food in, over there? Well, if I think about Ivalo, where I'm living right now, here is a two pizzerias and a, like a grill place where you can get hamburgers and stuff and pub food. That I would be happy to see something new. That it's almost always the new restaurant is all about pizzas and hamburger and this kind of fast food. Mm-hmm. So it would be great to see something different like a steakhouse or, or the other and other end is the like a this kind of a um, food but you but the tourists want to eat the local local um, ingredients uh, and but, but which is very nice that we have these kind of restaurants but still I'd love to do something else as well some Asian infused yeah, because like, if if you if you want to go for sushi, for example, that would be, would that be a, a challenge? Well, you can have a sushi from a local supermarket in some days, but uh, then right. I would I would rather do myself or then travel somewhere bigger city. You make your own sushi? Yes. Nice. Of of course, it doesn't taste as good when you are making it yourself, but. It's always better when someone else makes it. Well, it depends. You know, like if, if your if your sushi is good, then then um yeah, it's maybe better than to um yeah to to eat your own prepared sushi than than, than buying it from a store or, or something. That's mm. um you do, 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 that, do sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I love to cook a lot and I love to like try new things, and that's why I try to learn to cook also different Asian foods. For mm. example, ramen soup is one of my favorites. And uh, I'm all the time reading some recipes from internet and trying to learn more tricks with that. Because we don't have so many like places where you can eat Asian food. So, and you need to try to do it by yourself so you can enjoy something different. And in terms of Asian, do you, do you also because um, Asians like to eat spicy? Are you are you do you like to eat spicy as well, or is you? Do you oh like- yes, yes yes, spicy and like a strong bold flavors. I love it. Wow! All right, there's not not many. Well, at least the 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 Sami that I that I um, speak a lot with, talk a lot with, they like they like they don't like spiciness at all. So like. Um, that is interesting. So, what is what is your favorite um, dish? Or like, what do you like to prepare? 
Well, I like uh, a lot of walks and this kind of um, noodle things. For example, ramen has become one of my favorites, but uh, still I'm still searching for the best recipe. And last time I was in, uh, in Rovaniemi, which is like a northern biggest city or like the capital of uh, northern Finland. And uh, there I ate very good ramen. And I just have a random conversation with the chef there at how to make good ramen broth. And I haven't tried it yet, but he what kind of a tips he gave to me. What, so, what, what, was, what was the secret that he gave you or a tip? Many days and a lot of uh, effort with the broth that you need to make a very good like a, a bone broth at first that you don't use that much spices for that, but only just meat and then some uh, ginger, what else was there? trying to make it as clear as possible and not mm-hmm. too much meat in the broth so that's the way how you how you do it right oh i'm just interested because um i like i'm i'm, I'm a foodie myself I, I love food um um i eat too much food <laughs> that too um so <laughs> i'm always i'm interested in, into i was actually thinking about it like if if we were able to travel again um, that I would do like a podcast, but then in people's kitchen and I'm like, all right, what are you like to cook? Doesn't necessarily have to be idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's the thing that it, I learned that many of my favorite foods, it takes a lot of time, like a, a proper reindeer soup with all of the different, uh, and maybe for some people, weirdest things like eating a reindeer tongue and all of these kind of blood pancakes and uh, blood bloody things. These are my favorite. And it takes a lot of time and effort. So it would be a very interesting podcast for doing all of that. Very yeah. good idea. Oh well hey, and by the way, if, if you if you think that it's uh, you want to do with uh, with your um uh, as um um as your platform with the let's me then by all means like um should definitely do it. Maybe you're better in a better position to do it anyway. Um, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm more of an idea guy. Um, and sometimes I execute them or yeah, um, sometimes, and most, most of the times I don't, I guess that's why I write them um, a lot of times, but I like to learn languages and I like to learn recipes. Um, mostly because uh, when it comes to languages then I can, I like to communicate with people. Um, listen to people and communicate in a way that they understand, even though I would butcher, um, if you would teach me some, anything in, in skull Sami, I would butcher it the first, I don't know, five <laughs> times that I say it. Um, recipes, I'm, I'm a little bit better, better in, like, um, to, I, maybe it's a better way of learning. I, I watch and I, I repeat and, I, and, then, and then I, um, and also I'm also interested because I'm, I'm a part-time chef. So I, uh, oh, okay. yeah, it is, Hey, you got to pay the bills. You know, you, you do, you do, you do media. Um, I, um, I, I cook for a, uh, for a living. Well, not, not, not until recently. Um, as in like, we are, because of the, the quarantine lockdown, um, our restaurant was closed. Um, so, mm. um, but now they're opening up again. So I, so we're slowly transitioning into the work again. Um, and, yeah, cooking is it's like learning by mistakes. I, I don't know if you can see it, but I have like all these burn marks <laughs> on my on my yeah. arm with the with the oven. Um, so yeah, because I yeah I love to cook, and the funny thing is I walk a lot too. Like walk as in a- Asian walks. Um, one th- one thing that I've learned, and maybe maybe you already know this, um, is that the best way to walk food. Definitely veg- mm-hmm. veggies is, uh, no, let me ask you, like, how do you walk? Maybe, 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 because maybe I can learn from you. Or any, uh, anything, I start anything that always, you... Yeah, I always start with the, like a uh, garlic, chili, ginger, these kind of uh, strong flavors on the pan. Right. And then, or at first, I'm, if I use meat, then I 
at first I'm uh, cooking the meat as crispy as possible or like cook and then I do this flavors, both flavors, chili, garlic, ginger, whatever, and then put the vegetables in, then the meat and then possibly the noodles or whatever. Right. How, spe how specific you want. <laughs> so, um, or let us do, do, do. No, yeah, I, I do the same. I, I, I don't use a lot of oil. I just, um, not so much uh -oh. oil. Um, cause yeah, cause when, when it comes to wok, like obviously the, the wok itself needs to be like freaking hot. Um, mm. I, and, and at work and at home as well, I have a, a very thin wok. The, the thinner the wok, the better. Um, because you need to put it at, at high heat. Um, that, that, cause that, that's usually how you wash things or like the aging style, definitely. Um, yes. Um, the, the, the garlic and, and ginger and whatever you want to use, like put an onions, put that, put that in first, um, and let that simmer for a while and make it get it a nice color. This is turning into a, to a food podcast. Oh my God. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, next thing we do is, uh, turn on the oven and start to cook. <laughs> yeah. I just walk you through it, everything. Um, and I'm getting hungry when we are talking about food. <laughs> I know. I, so I, I should I should definitely not talk too much about it. Um, but one of the things that, that I that I learned as well is is yeah, low high heat, low oil, and use water. Um, so so you you put it on high heat. You do you do the, you do your basics, uh, ginger, uh, onions, and everything else. Do the, do that first. Then you throw in the vegetables that you're gonna use. Um, so that can be um, what it's called, get it paprika or capsicum, where it um, uh, depends on where you live. Um, um, what is also a good one? Carrots is a good one and courgettes. So that's, yeah, uh, yeah. Also, also, also good, good things. Slice them and you throw them in and the thing is when it comes to here's what, here's what the, the biggest mistake people make when it comes to walk uh, walking vegetables they and that's what the way they use a lot of oil the your um vegetables become very oily whereas you want the vegetables to get be, be still be crunchy uh but not wet so what mm. the best thing to do is all right. So um, you throw in your, your vegetables, and you you toss them around like like th that. That's the most fun part, right? Uh, when, when it comes to yes. walking, you tossing them around, and it's not and it requires a lot of practice. So if if you if you drop some food, uh, some pieces of, I don't know, gar uh, ginger or or carrots or whatever, that's okay. Um, you got you gotta, it's and it's in the uh, wrist, not not in the elbow. If you do from your elbow, then then all it will all be all over the place. But like it's the most motion is in is in the is in the wrist. Yeah, like what with the pancake. <laughs> right. And so to what you want the you want the vegetables to be like al dente. So like you have, have a little bit of crunch, but soft enough so that it's edible. So you do, so you walk, and then you um, you drop a little bit of water in it so it gets it, it's going to steam the um, the vegetables mm. and then you continue and then all the water vaporizes and you throw and add in a lot a uh, um, little bit of extra water and you do that like a couple of times and then you, 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 your vegetables will be crispy on the outside but soft on the inside and this is what you want to get because then you're going to add the, the noodles itself uh, which you've pre-cooked uh, i would assume um pre-cooked and, and then you pre-cook them and you, you you um add either sesame oil or oil olive oil um so that it doesn't stick so th that's what a lot so of people in do. that point you put oil um so when you so you do what you do what you do is for example you you cook the, the meat first or separately you cook the meat separately the vegetables but also it's very important to cook the noodles separately. 
Um, so you could cook the noodles in, themselves, um, add any uh, soft or hard that, that you want. As soon as it hits that spot that you, that's not too soft, but not too hard, um, then you um, immediately uh, cool it. So you, you um, put it in a, yeah, in a, in a sieve and then you let all the hot water run out. And then you, uh, the best thing is to, um, to wash it off with, um, uh, um, yeah, cold, not, not ice cold water, but cold water. So that it stops the, the, um, the process of, of, of cooking. And then you add um, oil, uh, sesame oil to it. So it won't stick to one another. That, that, is, that is the way to, and that, that, that's a, a good way to um, cook noodles, but also cook spaghetti or any kind of pasta that you want, you like to do. And then obviously, so you do do that. So you have your, um, yeah, you have your protein. So you, so your, um, so your meat and your vegetables. So, and then you, your noodles. So you cook your vegetables, it seemed crunchy on the outside, soft on the inside. You add your, your proteins, you give that a little stir. Um, and then when that is, has become the, a nice color and then you add in the noodles and then maybe people throw in some um, uh, uh, oyster sauce or teriyaki sauce. And then, yeah, you're pretty much good to go. It's the, uh, I don't know. Does this all make sense to you or is it it's like? It um, does. It's, you, you speak my language, food <laughs> and cooking. So it's true, like, true. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah it's a, it would be a very good idea for you to start to do some cooking podcasts and uh, some blogger as a, and, and the cooking on the same time. It, it could work for you very well. I will. Uh, I, I think Share I will, your yeah. recipes and your secrets. Yeah, like the, the thing that I would love to, love to do is actually to do this, but then like over whilst people are while we're cooking. So like for example, you have doesn't have to be a sami dish, but like all right, this is what I love to eat, um, and this is what I love to cook, and then yeah, you, you just cook it. I help I help you as much as I can, um, and, and and I think that would be a nice thing. And then obviously you have indigenous peoples that love to do cook indigenous food. Um, dig a hole and use hot rocks and that's also interesting so it is a way of I don't know you know the thing is, is it, it creates oxytocin which is which is a chemical in your brains which released when you every time you eat um, when you're happy um, mm. food um, releases oxytocin in your in your brain um, so I like to I like to talk to people when they're happy so I was like you know what why just why don't create a podcast when they're eating food or cooking food. So this, uh, so when people are happy, um, I like to see people happy. And I don't know, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good at making people happy. Um, at least, yeah. So, so that it's an idea. So uh, going to, um, I don't know, Inari or to Tromso or whatever, any, anywhere people live, once we can, travel again i would love to to to, uh, to try that out hopefully i'll be mm. i'm able to combine it with 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 the work obviously but yeah from time to time do that it can it can be a nice um project um to uh to launch what what is what is the project that you would like to launch like that's something that you would like well cooking show is always one of my dream it would be much fun to do it in my own terms and uh, doing it a bit differently and the, the sharing the uh, like um, Sami recipes and also what I used to uh, live with in my childhood and uh, what I'm still trying to cook because like you said before like that you never like you thought that many Samis that they don't like spicy food and that's really true and many people think that we used to do, uh, put too much uh, spices on reindeer but I um, totally disagree with that that reindeer works very well as a like a pulled pork or like pulled reindeer this kind of a very 
powerful uh, spices with as well and uh, and uh, also there is certain recipes where you don't fuck around and do too much like a strong uh, a strong spices or flavors that you need to use the salt and pepper and some other things that you do it traditional way but also reindeer is a very versatile for different asian foods and uh, trying something new that but i I've, I've been trying to do that many often right is there um and uh, yeah please go ahead Christine. no i i'm i'm finished <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh, no, so because so, while, while we were talking, and I know that, um, yeah, what don't you do? What do you, yeah, please take my idea. Please, 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 please do, do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, do that, do the uh, cooking show. And because um, uh, I'd like to, I'd like to learn more uh, from like how you, um, the Sami prepare the, the reindeer meat and everything else. And I think you're in better, not a better, but, um, yeah that's like it doesn't have to be like my idea um, it is just an idea and um mm. um yeah so i think you yeah you could you could you could do it definitely and it's you know you can you can talk to people to 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 in the sami youth right like i talk a little bit about um <laughs> the, the this it's called sami language heritage you know and then uh, something some talk about those topics I don't know that, that, that could be inter interesting. See, that's that's my that's my thing. I always have ideas. Um, that that's um, I, I try to think. Yeah, with, I have also you know, I have also ideas, but I never like uh, do anything with them. That maybe I'm just too lazy to start. But I think it's also like that. There's a time to do different things, and when the time is right, then it's, it's then it's possible to start something new. Right. There's there's this book out there, and I, I like the concept of of ideas. Um, it's the book is called. Do you read? Do you read, read books? Or uh, nowadays I haven't read so much. I've mm. been listening a lot of audio books. It's been like a savior for me. For example, I travel a lot. I drive a lot right. on a car by myself. So I've been listening a lot of audio books and the stories that way. Right. But yeah, I love to read, but <laughs> I stopped to go to libraries because I'm a very slow reader. So mm. <laughs> it took a, a eternity for me to read one book. And uh, then, of course, the bills were getting too high with the <laughs> library bills. And uh, then I stopped to use libraries that much right. so audiobooks have been a very good way for me to enjoy uh reading but uh, of course it's so much different because you don't have the actual book on your hand but uh, i think it's also because i might have some kind of add or like this kind of energetic <laughs> period it's hard for me to relax with the book so when i'm listening the audiobook like this when i'm doing talking with you I can also do things on the same time. Right. So yeah. it, it's not all about the reading, but like uh, concentrating on yeah. certain no, things. It, it, it is like passive consumption, uh, which, which is very helpful because you can, you, can, you can iron, you can mow the lawn, or you can do, do handicrafts and everything whilst learning, like with these audiobooks or podcasts and all these things. Yes. And, and that, 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 that's what I... I yeah, there was a while that I learned that I read a lot of books. Like I read for uh, since 2017, I read um, 40 books a year. So oh, um, that's a lot. Yeah, because um, I, I like to read, and then I realized that I, I'm a better listener than reader. So then I also wanted to go, wanted to like um, listen to audio books and everything else, and then. Yeah, you know that you you while driving a car or working out or for a run, and then you. But then sometimes that I there's a very good idea, 
uh, something. And then I have to like stop and, and then write it down or, or, or I, I think I remember it or to, to memorize it, but then I forget. So those are the things that I really have to like to pick up on. There's this book that it's called The Big, the Big Magic. The entire book is actually, and it's a good book though, but the, the, the entire book was, yeah, I don't know, not something that I was interested in. Um, um, it's, it's one of those books that you buy because the, you like the title, Big Magic. And <laughs> I think it's somewhere halfway. And there's the one, bit, one point that the book made that still resonated with, with me is that when it comes, and this is where we're, it's about ideas is that we don't pick ideas, ideas pick us. Um, which I find a very interesting theory that, that this, the, the author had. So imagine there was a, there was a whole dimension of ideas and um, it just tries to find the right host. You know, like the person that can really mm. execute on this idea. So the idea, for example, um, the, um, the idea of starting a cooking show arrives at me for example and um because i'm uh, it's it, the idea finds mm, that i'm a very good host to to put that idea into execution but um if it takes too long for um the host to execute or to 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 do something about the idea the idea leaves it doesn't, it leaves the host and then tries to find another one. Um, and I like the, and I, I like that in a way, I like that, that whole philosophy behind it, that, um, that for now, for example, that idea could, could, could just fly through the air and um, f- um, all the way to Finland and then just arrive in your, arrive at you. And then you, it, it goes into your, into your mind, for example. And it's, what the book also says is that um, that could be the reason why people, when they see something on TV or hear something on radio or whatever, and they say like, oh, shoot, yeah, I had the same idea. Or, um, yeah, I was about to do that. But this guy, uh, this, this lady was, um, was, yeah, beat me to it. It is <laughs> most, mostly because um, the idea was with you but then left because she didn't execute on it. Um, oh, I, th- I think yeah, that's, a- that's a very, I like the, this, um, this way of thinking as well. It's like a very easy for me as a journalist. I had many like uh, ideas of making a re- report or a essay about some different topics. And uh, I was just thinking that it would be nice to write about this, but I don't know how. And mm. then there is a little bit time goes on. You don't really, you, you are passively thinking about it, but then it comes like the certain time that, okay, now it's the time. This would be great on this, on, on here. And uh, for example, I'm going to send you the link on that, uh, my one of the articles, which is, translated to English and that uh, it's one of the <laughs> topics what I was thinking for a long time that this is a very important topic to tell the world about so right. that was one of the idea what I had for many years but then it didn't come so fast but when it came it just happened very 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 fast right hmm. And it was also almost like a, too easy to write everything. I didn't have a, anything like a writing, this kind of block with it, but uh, it came and uh, created very easily on the, the paper when I was working with it. Is there, is there have you ever thought about, um a maybe not bbc yeah maybe like a cnn for indigenous peoples yeah bbc for indigenous peoples but globally is is that something that is that a crazy idea like working there or what working there creating one 
it's not a crazy idea. I think it would be, uh, for me, it's been always very like interesting um, to meet and get to know other cultures. And I would love to see how indigenous medias and journalists would work more together and uh, share ideas and uh, at least have this kind of like a uh, co-works time to time even though it's very uh, challenging nowadays because we are all, of course living uh, all around the world so the connections all of the time zones and everything is getting uh, uh, on the way but still it would be very important for indigenous media and the journalism that we could more work together and uh, at least share some information about different topics. Yeah, yeah, I think, think um, I think that would be a, be a be a nice thing to to do and to to try to um, create a network actually of of because yeah, it's not much. Yeah, I'm, I'm tracking some, some in, uh, indigenous media outlets, um, Twitter, social media, and everything else, and it's it's mostly like focused on their own region. Um, whereas it, it could be interesting, like if, for example, in I don't know uh, Peru, that they talk about uh, it's called Sami, for example, like all right, this is what's going on in, in Sami land, and this is what's going yeah, on. Yeah, that, that that would I think that would be super interesting. Um, I don't know. I'm 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 restarting this this um, um, webinar series, and which includes a a a, a topic, um, indigenous media. So um, yeah, I was thinking about maybe that could be an idea, a start of like I'm, I'm going to invite like indigenous media, and then like all right, this is, what do you? I don't know. What is modern media? Um, what is the idea with that? Yeah, my, my singular question, like the 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 guiding question, would have been. Um, what does the modern indigenous media plan look like these um, or the future look like? And then, then mm. just one would like to hear people what they, what they think about it. Um, see, they're just all ideas and everything else. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, I'm sorry, Kasali, I need to go so because my dog is... I was, I was about to say. Kidding, so... <laughs> <laughs> But it's very, I'm very enjoying our conversation and uh, it was very great to meet you this way. I love it that how it. Yeah. nowadays, yeah, that how nowadays we can be connected and meet new people like uh, this way and talk on the phone a couple of hours. And, and uh, I hope that you will have a chance to visit in Sapmi. Yeah. Definitely, I'll I'll so, hope that we can do a, a cooking podcast episode. Um, yes. When I when it was stop me, we'll def definitely yeah, put that. Yeah, we can in, make some box from reindeer and something very spicy. I, I'll, I'll I'll keep you to it. I'll I'll keep you to it. Definitely, we'll we'll add that to the to the to the to the schedule. Definitely, uh, once everything is opening up. Yes. No, thank you so much, uh, That's Sarah, the priority. for your yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, thanks so much for, for your time and and um yeah really looking forward to learning more from you um and then um yeah at some point yeah please send me the documents because i'd love to learn more about and a lot i know that people would like to learn more about skull sami as well mm -hmm.